In this video, we're going to talk about why you should never get your gallbladder removed unless you absolutely positively need to. Today, I'm going to talk about six lies that the surgeons will tell you that you need to know the truth about. I'm also going to get into the best foods to consume if you have a gallbladder problem. Gallbladder removal is one of the most common surgeries done, especially in the U.S. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, there's over 3,000 gallbladder removal surgeries every single day in the United States. What is the gallbladder and what does it do? Is it just this little sack that sits underneath your liver that stores bile? And the answer is no, it has a lot of important functions. First of all, the bile is made by the liver and then it trickles down a little tube and it gets stored in this little sack called the gallbladder. Okay, so number one, the gallbladder is a storage of bile, okay? And it's a place where bile gets concentrated. Why do you need it to be concentrated? Well, because when you eat food, the gallbladder is supposed to contract and release all this bile to help you break down fats. Then the pancreas right here can release its enzymes to take it to the next level. And I'm not just talking about fat, I'm talking about the fat-soluble vitamins, vitamin A, D, E, K1, K2. I'm also talking about omega-3 fatty acids. To be able to extract any of that from your food, you're gonna need bile. And that's one of the purposes of the gallbladder, to concentrate it. If you don't have a gallbladder, your liver still makes it, but there's no storage. It just trickles down this little tube into the small intestine. So number one, that's gonna be an issue with your digestion and your ability to get these important fats. The second purpose of the gallbladder is it helps you regulate the bile release. So that way you're getting bile when you need it and not getting bile when you don't need it. The third thing that the gallbladder does is help you regulate excess cholesterol. Do you realize that the gallbladder and its bile are the primary uh, regulators of excess cholesterol? And a lot of people have an issue with cholesterol but they never check the gallbladder. Instead, they're put in a medication. Next thing is an antimicrobial function. In that gallbladder, this concentrated bile helps break down certain bacteria and certain viruses. Also, the gallbladder in its bile helps control hunger. It helps your blood sugar uh, get regulated. Next one is detoxification. Uh, the toxins that come from the liver uh, get help from the bile to help get rid of these toxins. Also, bile helps trigger one of the most powerful antioxidants that you have from your liver called glutathione. So you can see the gallbladder is more than just a sac. The bile can also influence your thyroid because it can trigger your thyroid hormones to make them work better. This is why people with a hypothyroid problem that they end up taking more bile salts or, or improving the bile salts, which I'm gonna explain how to do, will then improve the function of the thyroid. And so if you're low on thyroid hormones, that could be the reason why you have gallbladder issues or even gallstones. Gallstones are one of the big reasons why people remove the gallbladder. Well, what is a stone? A gallstone is a super concentrated cholesterol stone usually, okay, so it's made from too much cholesterol. So should we just lower our cholesterol? No, there's another piece of the puzzle that you really need to know. It's a high level of super concentrated cholesterol with a very low amount of bile salts. And then that equals a formation of a gallstone. So in reality, stones come from a lack of bile. Let's now get into certain lies surgeons will tell people that are absolutely not true. But let's start with number one. Uh, there are no other options when you have a gallbladder issue, right? Your gallbladder is killing you. You need to remove it. There are no other options. That is a lie. There are other options. You have oral bile salts. That's right. Just taking bile salts. In one study I read, 50% of the people had the gallstones dissolved within two years. In another study, it was just under 80% within six to 12 months. There's other forms of therapy too. Here's one, EDTA. This is a chelator. A chelator means claw, and you could take it and it connects to calcium and other minerals, and it locks it up and it pulls it out of the body. And I do wanna emphasize this, the oral bile salts have very little side effects, especially compared to to the removal of the gallbladder. There's also another alternative mechanical extraction of the gallstone 
without taking the gallbladder out. I'm not saying that you shouldn't do surgery under certain circumstances because it could be life-threatening. You need a complete informed consent where you know all of the options and all of the risks and all the side effects. And the last one is lithotripsy. This is using sound waves to break down the gallstone. Number two, a gallbladder that makes gallstones is diseased. Is it really a disease? or is it a symptom of something else? Does a doctor ever tell you what causes gallstones? Unfortunately, they don't get a lot of information about food therapy, especially in relationship to how that affects the gallbladder and the bowel release, and so that's why I'm doing this video. Number three, you cannot prevent gallstones by the diet. So let's say, for example, you're getting some consultation with a doctor and you're asking about diet and they tell you that um, diet really doesn't have a lot to do with it. Well, then I would ask them, what does cause gallstones, right? How can you be so convinced that the root cause of a gallstone can't be related to the diet when the gallbladder in its bile is part of your digestive system? What else would cause that? It's kind of like common sense. Number four, removal of the gallbladder does not result in complications. Wow. That's interesting because there are a lot of people that I've known, in, even in practice, that had massive complications when they had their gallbladder removed. Even in one study, it was up to 40% of people who had their gallbladder out had at least one or more symptoms, even up to 25 years after that extraction of the gallbladder. What are some of the common symptoms? Diarrhea, gastritis depression, anxiety, increased risk of cancer. If you have your gallbladder removed, your risk of colon cancer goes up by 11%. The risk of liver cancer goes up by 60%. The risk of pancreatic cancer goes up by 22%. And the risk of bile duct cancer goes up by 45%. And the question is why? Well, when you have the gallbladder removed, now we no longer have a regulation of that concentrated bile. But one of the big ones is bile acid malabsorption. That usually occurs because we have now a situation where we have excess bile draining from the liver into the small intestine. So now you're put on a medication that tends to slow down the bile release. And that's not without side effects because now the side effects from that are constipation, a whole series of other issues. Number five, post-cholecystectomy syndrome is controversial. Now, it's not controversial. Look it up in Wikipedia. Uh, there's a lot of problems when they remove that gallbladder. Number six, even if the gallstone results from pregnancy, you still need the surgery. Now, if someone tells you that, I would definitely get a second opinion because estrogen has a huge influence on the gallstone. And as soon as you get through your pregnancy and estrogen normalizes, is the gallstone going to stay there or is it going to go away? Same thing with birth control pills, right? You have this spike in estrogen and all of a sudden you end up with a gallstone. Well, it's estrogen. Estrogen inhibits the production of bile salts and the release of bile salts from your gallbladder. That's what it does. Another one is just having extra weight. The more weight you have, the more you're at risk for a gallstone. Because when you're overweight, you have other issues as well, like you have blood sugar issues. And this is why being a diabetic puts you at risk for gallstones as well. But the biggest reason why people have gallstones, the elephant in the room, is high levels of insulin, especially if you have insulin resistance. I've done probably over 300 videos on insulin resistance, how it causes a fatty liver, weight gain, high blood pressure. What's gonna happen is your liver is not going to make enough bile and the gallbladder itself is gonna be weak. It's not gonna be able to contract fully to release that bile. And how is that created? Well, the person is consuming too many carbohydrates or sugars, seed oils, and they're eating too frequently too. And here's another point that supports that. People that do intermittent fasting, they don't eat very frequently, have more concentrated bile that helps dissolve the stone. And this is why one of the big root causes and important actions to correct 
gallstones is to get on a low carb diet and do intermittent fasting. Super, super important. You have two different types of bile. You have the bile that's made by the liver, but you also have bile that's made by your microbes. Anything that destroys the microbes, as in an antibiotic, can also affect your bile. When people get an antibiotic, they're more at risk for a gallstone. When people get an antibiotic, they gain more weight because one of the symptoms of the removal of the gallbladder is weight gain, which is fascinating. Another cause of lowered amount of bile is going on a low fat diet or a low cholesterol diet, because guess what makes bile? Cholesterol, that's where it comes from. And if you're not putting any cholesterol in at all, you could be deficient and you're not gonna be able to make bile. This is why people that are on a low fat diet are more at risk for a gallstone than people that are not on a low fat diet. Fascinating. And this brings up another question. What type of fat encourages the liver to make more bile or synthesize more bile out of all the fats possible? Because there's a lot of different types of fats. Well, apparently it's fatty fish that have the most potent effect on the bile production, which is, it makes sense from an evolutionary standpoint because in that fatty fish, you have something that's super important, DHA. That's an omega-3 fatty acid, but there's other fatty acids too, from meat and even olive oil. Of course, I would not recommend uh, the seed oils because that's gonna create inflammation. But the other thing that triggers the liver to make more bile is cholesterol foods. Butter, eggs, shellfish, seafood, liver. And it just so happens that egg yolks and liver are high in choline. Choline is another key nutrient to help make bile. In fact, if you took choline as a supplement, it's kind of like taking a type of bile to help you digest fats. Now, we talked about the liver, but are there things to help you contract the gallbladder so you can stimulate the gallbladder to release more bile? Well, that would also be some of these fats I talked about and proteins, but also other things too, like bitter greens, arugula, radish, even celery, maybe add some sauerkraut to increase the bacteria so you can make additional bile salts to help purge that bile and help you digest. Even also the citrus, like in lemon and limes, can also help purge that bile too. And taking more acid and as an apple cider vinegar or a betaine hydrochloride can also increase the acidity, which will then trigger the release of the bile from the gallbladder because you need a strong acid in your stomach to be able to trigger that. And a lack of acid could be the reason why things aren't flowing through there as well. So in other words, your stomach problem is causing the gallbladder problem. So you really have to kind of connect the dots. Certain herbs can also increase the contraction of the gallbladder like turmeric, ginger, milk thistle, parsley, cilantro. And as a side note, if someone goes through a lot of chronic stress, they're gonna have more cortisol. That's gonna shut down the bile too. If they took a synthetic version of cortisol called prednisone, that can shut down the bile salts as well. Now you have a diet that's actually really, really healthy, not just for gallstones, but to support your gallbladder. But I just challenge you to investigate and do research on maybe uh, consuming uh, bile salts after each meal, something like Tutka and Purify Bile Salts. I hope you are a lot more aware of your gallbladder and the importance of it. Now that you understand the importance of the gallbladder, the next most important thing to know is the importance of actual bile. And for that information, watch this video right here.